Welcome you give to Jesus for the cleansing power Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you with garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright? We are taken right away to the mansion's bright when the bridegroom comes. The only thing is the garment of righteousness, the robes whitened by the blood of Jesus. A sin-sicken person can get your white garments after the cleansing of the soul by the blood of Jesus. Let's sing that again. That consciousness of being bought by the blood, washed by the blood. Yes. The great robe cometh, will your robes be white? I wash That is the secret of being washed in the blood and continue to acknowledge that we are bought and washed by the blood of the Lamb to overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony. That is our testimony. What is our testimony? The Redeemer has bought me by his blood. I don't belong to myself. He owns me. I don't own him. I, I don't, we don't own Jesus. He wants us. He is our landlord. He is our Lord. He is our God. He is our Redeemer. He is our Savior. We are not our own. That is why we rejoice as we sing 
590. This is the day. 590. 590. Young, young people. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day. also sing like this you know, this is the day that the lord has made i will rejoice and be glad in it i will rejoice take that we and put i i means what me you so put that i in. i will rejoice not with a sad frowny face but rejoicing i will rejoice all right let's sing This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. And we rejoice, and we rejoice, and we glad in Him, and we glad in Him. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we glad in Him. This is the day. more time study this is the day that the lord has made and the lord has made i will rejoice i will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it this is the day that the lord has made i will rejoice and be glad in it this is the day Put one more time. We will rejoice this time. Okay. All right. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. The Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Yes, Lord. Sit down. Jonah wants to come over here, right? Say it again. Right there, okay. You got to speak so loud. Enough. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I believe uh, Brody has something to say too, right? Are you ready? Thank you, Lord. You know, when young people are encouraged to do what they have to do, time goes by, they will be orators, singers, musicians, whatever God's talent could be. God's talent for everybody is different. God's abilities and gifts are different. 
but they all for the same purpose yes. to glorify God on the earth and as we glorify his name using all of our talents and all that God has given to us gifts money and everything what happens let's give my hand praise the lord Elijah on Mount Carmel, taken from all the stories in the Bible and written by John Walsh. The famine in Israel was severe and lasted for three years. Finally, the Lord told Elijah to tell Ahab that he was going to send rain. The person in charge of Ahab's court was a man named Obadiah, who was faithful to God and even hid hundreds of the servants of God while Jezebel was trying to hunt them down. Now one day, Ahab and Obadiah went walking to search for land for the palace livestock. They went in two different directions so they could search more land. Now as Obadiah was walking along, Elijah walked up to him. And Obadiah fell down and said, Oh, my Lord, Elijah. And Elijah said, Go tell Ahab that I am here. Elijah, Obadiah was shocked. He said, what have I done that you want me killed? The king has searched for you across the whole nation and even in other countries. As soon as I tell him that you are here, he, he will kill me. No, as soon as I tell him that you are here, the Lord will carry you off to some other place. And then when he finds out that you are not here, he will kill me. Please don't do this to me. Then Elijah said, as the Lord lives, I will meet with Ahab today. So Obadiah went and told Ahab. When Ahab saw Elijah, he said, So there is the man who's destroyed Israel. Elijah said, No, it is not me, but you who has destroyed Israel. You've turned your back on God and now are serving Baal. Gather the prophets of Baal and of Asherah in, on Mount Carmel, along with the Israelites. So once Ahab had gathered the prophets and the Israelites on Mount Carmel, Elijah started by saying, How long will you go back and forth? If the Lord is God, serve him. And if Baal is God, serve him. But the people said nothing, but just stared at the prophet. Then he said, Look at me, I stand here as only one prophet. But look, there are 450 prophets of Baal. Give us two bulls. They'll put, take one, prepare for a sacrifice, and put it on top of wood. But they won't put fire to the wood. I'll do the same. They'll call on the name of their God, and I'll call on the name of the Lord. The God who lights the fire, he is God. The people said, yes, that sounds fair. So Elijah told them, you can go first. So the prophets of Baal prepared the sacrifice and put it on top of wood. They called out all morning until noon. They even danced around the altar, but nothing happened. Elijah started to mock them. Maybe you need to shout a little louder. Maybe your God is sleeping and you need to wake him up. Maybe he's gone to the toilet. So they shouted louder and cut themselves until blood, cut, blood, until blood gushed out, but nothing happened. Then Elijah finally built an altar out of 12 stones one for each of the tribes of Israel. He prepared the sacrifice and put it on top of wood and dug a trench around the altar. Then he told the people, get some water and pour it on the sacrifice. And once they had done this, he told them to do it a second time. And once they had done it a second time, he told them to do it a third time. And once they were done, the sacrifice was totally wet and the trench was full of water. And then Elijah walked up to the altar and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Answer me so that these people will turn back to you, and they will know that I am your servant. Suddenly fire fell down from heaven and burned up the sacrifice 
the wood, and the 12 stones. It even licked up the water that was in the trench. Then the people fell down and shouted, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And then Elijah ordered, Grab the prophets of Baal. Do not let any of them escape. So the people grabbed the prophets of Baal, and Elijah killed all of them. Then, Ahab, then Elijah told Ahab to eat something, for there's a rainstorm coming. Then he went up to a mountain to pray with his servant. After he was done praying, Elijah told his servant, Look towards the sea. What do you see? His servant said, I do not see anything. Elijah told him to do this seven times. And on the seventh time, his servant said, I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand coming for, up from the water. Elijah said, Quick, go tell Ahab to rush home for there's, so the rain doesn't stop him. So Ahab got in his chariot and rushed home as fast as he could. Shortly after, there was a, the sky became dark and a downpour of rain began. And the power of God came over Elijah, and he ran faster than Ahab's chariot and revived in Jezreel before him. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. In answer to prayer, God can do a lot of things. You know. Blessed be the name. You know, sometimes our God is not a cheap God. You know. He's a creative yeah. genius. All that you could think of, intelligence is in God. You know. Omniscient. I remember that time we had to go to the most dried place. You know. And uh, the gentleman who came, he was a powerful man of God. He took me, we traveled all night to go there. And um, I was able to witness to about three, four people with a little kerosene lamp light. Thank God I had a flashlight too. You know. And uh, all of them surrendered to Christ. And uh, I prayed, you know, Lord, you sent rain in answer to the prayer that Elijah prayed. I, in no way I can compare myself to Elijah, but I still have the same Holy Spirit that Elijah had. You know. So, Lord, I pray you send rain. You know. Boy, what a rainfall in that village. You know. And they all told me, you brought rain to this place. And I said, no, I didn't bring. The Lord Jesus brought rain. Till I left, even at the bus station, I preached the gospel to all of them. God is the author of rain. Our God can do anything. We should not limit God. Another time we had a Holy Ghost revival meeting. In my hometown, when the monsoon rain starts, it will never stop. That's the time we had that Holy Ghost revival meetings. So I prayed to God to stop the rain. <laughs> four days. Did God do it? Yes, he did. All four days. I was an eyewitness. So I could see how Elijah felt when, the, when he prayed. Boy, what a God we serve. We used to sing a song, What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Yes. Heaven and earth adore him. Yes. What a mighty God we serve. So we serve a mighty God. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God. So is there anything impossible for God? No, nothing. Nothing is impossible. All right, praise the Lord. Any other uh, testimony or announcement? Yes. Yeah. 
Excellent. Chris, if you believe that Christ died for us, then on the cross for our sins, he said, yes. I said, okay, yes, this is prayer. I should have prayer. I said, you can take it home and pray in your room, and but you have to clean the room. Pray it. And she says, well, can I do it now? Oh, oh thank I you, said, Lord. Yeah, you should. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the way to do it. The soul was ready. Why, they call it, you finish the deal, just like Christ would do it. Excellent. Thank you, Lord. Not more than a man said can do anything. He can be a source of happiness to the king. He is a man of God. I profess it. Yes, he will be the God himself. Excellent. That's true. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's why the God gave you the green signal yes. to go there. And then uh, you ran upstairs to get the tract. Yes. So those are all indications, you know what I mean? What God was doing and you saw it, you felt it. Well, let me make use of this. Yes. You can do it now or you could go home and do it or what? Yes. I remember one person did it on the elevator yes. on the way up. You know, God hears the sweetest music that God enjoys is what? The cry of a sinner for salvation. That is the sweetest music. More angels in heaven rejoice, more for the one soul that repents than for all the righteous ones. That's why Christ spent that last moment to speak to that thief on the cross and saved him and took him. Praise God. All right. Any other testimony or any announcement? Travis wanted to announce something. What? Yes. If anyone's available to give uh, Arthur a ride back to uh, Compton today, let me know. We can talk after. And that's all we can do. All right. Thank you. Blessed be the name. Come on in. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Welcome. Praise the Lord. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Lord. Is this your first time here or before? You came here before? Yes. First time, right? No, I came here before. That's right. I remember you with the guitar. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Anything else? Any announcement? If not, we'll sing the third song. That's a song I, I sang long time before. I, I hope Travis may have sung that at the Bible College where we both graduated from. 542. You know. When we all get to heaven, what a day of Rejoicing that would be. Folks, the rejoicing of the heart is like a soul coming to salvation for the first time. That is the way we would feel when we meet at the Master's feet as, he, as we kick our earthly abode and go over there. 542. 542. Thank you. 
background of this song the lady who wrote this eliza hewitt lisa eliza she composed this poem on her way or before they she went to uh, a conference you know, in new jersey you know. and uh, she always went there every year along with her friend by name emily and it was like a mountain top experience what does that mean like meeting christ at the mountain top like moses felt it so that's what she expected of them so she composed this whole song and when they this eliza a presbyterian lady and uh, a school teacher emily was a, a methodist pastor's wife but anyway they were there both lived in philadelphia so they used to go once in a year so it was always a heaven on earth experience for them at the conference a lot of kids love that camp experience oh i met christ there similar so one summer this is what the story you know eliza brought along this poem she had written and she asked emily can he compose music for that and that's the way this song she was a musician and uh, she felt boy more than this mountain top experience here when we all need jesus what a rejoicing that would be so we'll sing that third birds one glimpse let us yeah let us that be true can shout the victory when we all have a glimpse of him just a glimpse what a wonder it's going to be blessed be the name of jesus thank you lord thank you lord all right we are going to have the word of god now um brother edwin would you like to ask a word of prayer yes you want to pray yes, yes. thank you Yes no we can have a seal of peace and the seal of salvation and the seal of spirit to extend the us to the world for we are yours your word is substantial live it we are ready to see in the name of Jesus Amen thank you lord thank you Jesus there's a very simple message the lord has been brewing in my heart to speak as to the effect of what God's word can accomplish when we minister under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. There is always something that God wants to do in his way for his glory. I was thinking about an anthropologist. What is an anthropologist? The study of man, study of human beings. He was doing some research in a village. While he was leaving, 
he had plenty of time waiting for a ride like you always do he wanted to give or teach a story through a kind of an incident something he wanted to do a practical thing so he had a basket of uh, candies and everything all candies and everything okay but you can see he had a basket full of candies and everything in it he wanted to put it near a tree and he did it and he asked all the kids you know whoever runs fast will get all the candies and everything there is in the jar i was looking at a candy jar this morning beautiful jar boy it could have had about 4 5 pounds of candy i don't know how big the jar was there were a lot of kids so it looks like a big jar everything goes to one person who is the winner but the key is you got to run as fast as possible and get the prize so he told uh, all the young people i want you stay all one line and you on your mark get set go as soon as they say go everybody you got to run them. and whoever wins the first prize is the fastest runner so he said on your mark get set go at that point you know what they all did they all joined hands with one another and they all ran together and they all ran together that's amazing right yeah just the opposite of what you would think and it's always rejoicing to get all the candies yourself but for some reason all these kids they all ran together so that really is made him think you know why would they do to do this and so he asked how come that you all ran holding each other's hand and one girl replied and i don't want all the candies for myself i want everybody to rejoice i want everybody to have the same joy of receiving the candy i was thinking about my own situation back home in my ninth grade the headmaster came and he had a huge <laughs> jar of candies and he announced he read everybody's name who got all the subjects passed and all those who failed one subject they failed they got one blessing with a nice cane and one two subjects failed two three subjects three <laughs> four subjects four and then he went above and above you know i said oh, i don't know what i did it then i knew oh i'm never above the cave of destruction so i passed everything thank you lord i, I didn't pray thank you lord i didn't know the lord at that time i was an atheist i don't know how i did it i used to say thank goodness but anyhow i passed all of them then he gave then he gave the instruction you know, let's see who got the top most you know. and he read all the numbers and the rank and the total marks that we had got and then the second person third person 10 9 oh maybe i am in the 8 no 7 6 and he mentioned the name 5 4 2 the only one left was it was me you know. i said wow i was so happy you know. so he asked me to come forward and put your hand into this candy jar take as much as you want <laughs> oh i took all of them as much as my hand could grab and put them all in my pocket then he said take this jar back to my office and as much as you want you can take from it oh i filled all my pockets you know on the way and returned it so it's always i didn't you know i could have distributed to the entire class i would have got beaten because i don't know but i gave it to some of my classmates later on but the moral of the story about these young people did is greater than my story they all wanted to rejoice together there is always something 
you know, a father told his son, Joe, there is more that you can learn by, uh, by your best friends you choose, you know. So now we were neighbor, he came under that. This is the court, you know. And he said, you know, there is more you can do, you know, best friend, you know. Joe, good friends are one of life's greatest treasures. What is your life's tra- greatest treasure? If you have a good friend. He used to say always, you know, a good friend is always the best you can have. A friend in need is a good friend indeed. Have you heard that? <laughs> a lot of them, you know. United, we, the, in unity there is strength and all that. Jesus said, uh, he who gives his life you know, is the greatest friend. Jesus is our greatest friend. You know. And he gave his life for you and for me. You know. So, I was thinking about the story in the Gospel of Mark, the second chapter. This man had four friends. This man had four friends. I don't know much about the story, about the four friends, but they wanted to do something for him. They wanted to do something for him. Jesus was preaching in a place, and it was a multiplied People always, multiple people would throng, you know, a thronging crowd, you know, pressing toward to reach the house. You know. People outside, everywhere. You know. That is the situation. You know. Suddenly, you know, Christ was preaching, the lots of kids were there, young people were there. Suddenly, they all looked up to the roof. You know. It was a distraction. You know. Jesus stopped preaching. You know. And he looked up. There were four people letting go of a bed where there was a man lying there. He was a cripple. The Bible calls him, he was a paralyzed man. Paralytic. I was thinking about this. Why? If I could compare that story to the four people that Job had. Wow, what a friend Job had. Three of them supposedly his wisest friends, you know. Number one, Eliphaz. What did he say to Job? You know? He told him, look, innocent people do not suffer, you know. So humble yourself. Job, repent. That is Eliphaz's instruction. Put Eliphaz in the place of this man, you know. Talking to the paralyzed man. Yay, look, you are paralyzed because you are not innocent, you know. Humble yourself and repent, you know. Then the second guy, you know, Bildad, what did he say, you know? He accused Job of accusing God himself. You know? Accused Job of accusing God himself. You deserve this. You know? Can you believe that? Imagine the second friend telling the paralytic, yeah, you deserve this. We are not going to take you over there. You, know? you go through this. You are making a mockery you know? when you say that I'm going to appeal to God. You know? Job, don't do that. You know? That was the second companion. The third one, you know, so far, you know, he went very high. He went so far. <laughs> so far went so far. To say that, you have rejected God. You have rejected. you have rejected God. By questioning God's justice, you are rejecting God. You know. So my friend, Job, so far was saying, get right with God. You know. This is what you got to do, you know. All these three companions, you know, these were his best friends, you know, and they made it everything simplistic, you know. They had their reserved understanding. Then finally, you know, there was another gentleman by name Elihu. He was the youngest. He was listening to all these three people talk to Job. You know. Hey, look, you guys have more understanding, you know, because you are older in age. You are elderly. I am just younger than you all. You know. But I got some wisdom. So he was trying to portray himself as a wise guy. What a guy, wise guy. And he was saying, hey Job, you are self-righteous and indulging in self-justification. You know. If I could summarize all that he said, you know, the beautiful chapters. You know. And he was partially correct. You know. He was partially correct about God's justice, God's greatness. No innocent will suffer. No person wise of heart, you know. He talks about it, you know. No person. 
in chapter 37-34, God shows no partiality to anyone who are of wise of heart. And what does that mean? If you have wisdom in your heart, if you are a wise man, God will not punish you. But by asking God to do what? Accusing in an accusatory way, you are rebelling against God. You know? Your rebellion adds to your sin, Job. Don't do this. You know? See, these are his ways of saying that God will not punish a person who is wise. You know? So in other words, Job, you are not wise. You know? And you are also not, not only that you are not wise, you don't have knowledge. You know? So you are devoid of wisdom and knowledge, you don't have wisdom. Imagine that these four people meeting this paralyzed man and telling him, it is like a gang attack. Don't you think so? Four people talking to this paralyzed man. They, are, they were not part of a solution. They were part of a problem. But God wanted people in this world to be a part of a solution. You know? yeah. We are all in this together. You know? We all belong to the society called humanity. We all belong. So we have to pray for one another. We have to help one another. Where there is an absolute need. You know, without any exploitation whatsoever. That is the key. You know. Here this paralyzed man was not trying to exploit anybody. He was in this condition. You know. He had a goal in his life. Like our Pastor Edwin would say. He had a target in his life to get healed. You know. Just like the man sitting at the... A place where Jesus went to him at the Bethesda. The, and would he like to be hold? Of course, you know. He was pressing toward the mark of the price of his healing. You know. Didn't want to give up. Endurance, you know. Yet, sir. He had that motive, you know. good motive. But anyhow. So here, all these four companions, Job's companions, they indulged in a gang attack. You, know. you wonder, you know, did they do anything about it? They knew, they believed in God and this and that, but they did not pray to God. Did they pray for Job? No, not at all. Job needed sympathy. You know, 19th chapter talks about it. Hey, friends, all that I want from you is sympathy. You know, 1921. Pity me, pity me. Oh, you, my friends. You know. But they were so simplistic. You know. And uh, Job wanted only one thing. You know, God to hear him. You know. God to speak for him. God to intervene. But they didn't want to do anything about it. Yes. And Job also confessed, you know, I am not perfect. You know. What does that mean? Job is not pure. Chapter 9 and 10. You know. So this is the way the world is. These four companions are not companions. The three are his best friends, supposedly. They had more accusation against Job than he could think of. You know. That is why you would see God in the end trying to take them into task. Look at these four people. You know. They wanted to be part of the solution. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to be a part of a solution? Not a part of a problem? That's the kind of people God wants. And they were working with God in bringing this paralyzed man, you know, paralytic. You know. But they couldn't enter the door. Let's read from the Gospel of Mark, second chapter. Now it will make much more sense to you. Now that I have given you a little bit of the background. The Gospel of Mark, second chapter. How Peter saw it. I don't know what the disciple thought about it. The kids were all looking up. What happened? The roof. They were starting to remove the roof one by one. One little piece after the other. It was easily removable pieces on the top of the roof. Mark, second chapter. Let's read it. As we read it here, the scriptures tells us, Mark, second chapter. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, Mark is always aggressive. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them. Not even near the door. Can you believe that? They call it packed and jammed. You know. yeah. What did Jesus do? You know? He preached the word to them. You know. Very important scripture. You know. 
Jesus always preached the word. He himself was the embodiment of the truth, the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Why did Jesus come to preach the word? Because faith is the substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It is the anchor. God cannot do anything without his word. But God will do everything for his word. So he preached the word. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, oh, then, then there came to him bringing the day. The four people came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. How many? Four people. They are not Job's friends, you know, thank God. These are not Elipas and all the others, all the way to Elihu. You know. When they could not come near him, they were really motivated because of the crowd. They uncovered the roof you know, where Christ was, where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. They let him down. When Jesus saw their faith, faith. wow, faith in action. Faith in action of the we don't know. Yes, Jesus saw their faith. When Jesus sees your faith and my faith in action, Jesus has to respond. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, See, he accepted him as his child, you know, his son. Your sins are forgiven you. Only God can do that. And some of the scribes, the writers, were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Who can forgive sins but God only? That's true, you know. But here is God. Here is God. The same God who intervened in Job's life. The same God who intervened in Mount Carmel. The same God who intervened in uh, opening the Red Sea. River Jordan. Bringing all the Israelites out of Egypt. The same God is in Jesus. And he's the same God. I am the Lord. I change not. Amen. One God in three and three in one. Praise God. And that God is in action here. And they could not see God in Jesus. They did not see him as the Lord God. They couldn't see it. Their eyes were not opened up because they could not listen to God's word. But immediately when Jesus perceived it, Jesus perceived it. What does that mean? Jesus knew their thoughts. What you are thinking, Jesus knows. Even exactly at this moment, God knows every one of us what you are thinking. Everyone thinking in the whole world, God knows it. Why is, how come? He is the omniscient God, all knowing God, omniscient. So Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus with themselves. Then he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Why do you think that God alone can forgive sins and not me? I am God here. Which is easier to say to the, to the paralytic? You know, he posed a question. You know. Come on, you guys are wise. Let me see you know, who can solve this. You know. Which is easier? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven you? Question number one. Can you tell the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven you? Yes, anyone can say that. I can tell somebody, your sins are forgiven. You can tell somebody else, yeah, your sins are forgiven. Don't say the sinner's prayer and all that. Don't call upon the name of the Lord. Just drop some money. I'll pray for you. Your sins are forgiven, go in peace. Anyone can do that. Anyone can do that. That's why every person has to meet with God and Him alone. Because God alone can say your sins are forgiven. That is where there is no mediation between God and man. Except the man Jesus Christ. There is only one mediator between God and man. Who is he? The Lord Jesus Christ. That is why he said I am the way. 
the truth and the life no one comes to the father no but by me that is why we are like lamp posts lighthouses pointing toward christ and him only so no one can say your sins are forgiven it could be easier for anybody to say that but the sins are never going to be forgiven but when i say sins are forgiven because i am god i am the second person of the trinity because i am going to die for their sins so christ had in at this point given his life on the cross but he was still able to do that your sins are forgiven you or to say arise take up your bed and walk this is what fascinated me about christ when i was an atheist only christ could talk to a crippled man get up and walk all the doctors put together in the world they cannot tell a crippled man rise up and walk you can ask some people can any doctor tell a patient who is a crippled they can only imitate a cripple my wife was telling the story of a dog walking like a limp, limping dog you know, because the dog's owner was limping you know. so the dog also started limping you know. he couldn't understand that why does this dog is limping you know? so he took it to the vet and found nothing wrong with it because the dog when it is running all by itself in the yard it runs but he's when he's walking with the master he walks like limping like the master himself why because he wanted to identify with the master so the vet said no nothing wrong with the dog the dog is so sensitive to you so he wants to walk like you do imagine that the dog wanted to be sympathetic not like the job's friends totally unsympathetic very sympathetic toward the master so that's the way these people were those four of them and jesus saw their faith but the pharisees the scribes here the so called jewish leaders writers of the law they couldn't see it they tried to be cynical christ cannot say your sins are forgiven you are not authorized to say it you are only a carpenter's son you know that's the way they were thinking you know but he is posing a question you know which is easier to do you know? to tell the man your sins are forgiven or to tell him rise up and take up your bed you know but that you may know i did this that you may know that the son of man you know, that is the son of god the lord god jesus has the power on earth to forgive sins he said to the paralytic you know, i am i say to you arise take up your bed and go to your house arise i say to you rise up take up your bed and go to your house what an authentic word the creative wonder of god's word that could make that man rise up and walk and christ did it that is why he is god our god can do what no other person can do you know i was listening to a story of a lady her name is helen bahani or something in eritrea uh, i heard it on the voice of the martyrs they put her in a container ship container and beat her up black and blue and they told her if you renounce if you say i don't believe in jesus we will let you go you know. no matter how much they beat her up she won't say it every day they bothered her helen said no then one day they beat her so badly and she couldn't bear that any more even then you know, she was singing you know, with the songs there is a book on it the songs of a nightingale by her you know. i may be able to buy that book and read it you know. what a story i have seen some people parallel uh, persecuted in india brother edwin may have seen many of them muslims coming to christ oh it is a story that you know very pathetic someone told me you know can he help this girl and bring her out of pakistan she is a muslim given her heart to christ can he help her i don't know how to help her i would love to so there's a legal side to it 
and all the other sides but if i can i will definitely do that so i've been praying for her there are a lot of people in problems persecuted him so what helen did was she prayed for the people who were beating her every day can you do that yes she prayed for them she loved them lord you forgive these people oh god forgive them then ultimately she was released now she is praying for all the others when i heard that i can't believe this three pastors in jail today in eritrea in africa three pastors unbelievable so for the sake of the gospel these why is brother these are reported there may be many many unreported cases many are there and unreported they are there that is why prayer lots of people were in prayer for helen and they wrote to the government please let her go so the boys of the martyrs are announcing on the radio this morning please write to the government to release those pastors there is a moral responsibility all over the world there is a gospel resistance everywhere even in this country more resistance but they don't throw you in jail but sometimes they do there were times they did that here too but much more freedom here but you never know but the long and short of the matter is we are facing a world that is not gospel friendly gospel friendly the last whole days. say it again we are in the last days we are in the last days that is why all these things are happening and uh, come to the bible study this thursday brother will share a little bit more but what happens when a no, i don't want to say anything on the line here it's all recorded praise god god is a good god yes. so we need to be prepared for what god is doing in our lives what god can do through you or me anywhere i remember the time you know, the ruling party at that time i believe i didn't know they were the in india at that time you know, i stood right in front of their place in the headquarters passed out 1000 tracts you know. later those people in that part of north india they told me you know, the pastor told me you know, where did he go today you know? i said uncle i used to call him uncle i went to this place you know. oh my god stood up there nobody saw you no nobody saw me you know. that is the headquarters of this party you know. they are the killers of christians you know. how did he escape it's a miracle the lord protected me you know. you talk about the angels of god protecting you psalm 91 you know. blessed be the name of jesus so god, our god is on our side you know. yes. knowing the source of the answer is the solution you know. knowing the source of the solution and dealing with the problem is another part of the solution and carrying the problem to the lord jesus himself all these three are needed you know. mm-hmm. knowing the source of the answer dealing with the problem and carrying the problem to the person who could solve the problem and that is christ they didn't want to give up blessed be the name of jesus so in that united way they were able to solve the problem for this paralyzed man that's why there is no one who can say anything against a significant dynamic impregnable insurmountable miracle in that only our god can perform you know that is why there is a way to witness to people and tell them about the miraculous power of god miraculous. who can do this in our days look at how many people we have prayed for from covid how many connected to our fam- our church family you know? we prayed so many were prayed for right dorothy can witness for it so many people in her family you know? starting with the lawrence right so many we prayed for all of them were delivered from covid Amen. blessed be the name of jesus Amen. praise god i never got the covid i think almost 99% didn't get it right praise god god protected us the same 90% psalm i preached here before the covid was going to be rampant no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling Amen. i stood on that god's word lord it should not touch our people it should touch me even when the doctor told my wife you have symptoms of covid go and sleep in the next next room i said no i don't believe this she didn't believe it either she didn't believe it she came back the very next day and slept next to me 
being my wife. I, I said, Lord, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. So I'm not going to say the doctor is trying to do the right thing. He didn't want the symptoms to spread. You can spare Paul. But God's word proved to be true. So I carried the problem to Jesus that day. And, Lord, this is it. I don't believe that it's going to come. My body is the redeemed body. Amen. Satan, you are not going to touch my body. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You spirit of fear. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. Just like the paralyzed man was brought to Christ. I brought my situation to the Lord that day. And my wife's situation. And then she didn't have any of the symptoms. The doctor thought that she had COVID. Isn't that amazing? That's why yeah, uh, my car makes so many problems. So it's going to the mechanic tomorrow. Unbearable noise it makes. So I call the mechanic. Before I give the car to the mechanic, I always pray for the mechanic to take care of the car. Before I go to see a doctor, I pray for the doctor. So that they will die because they got so much pressure. We can see Dr. Sylvester is working today. Imagine that. I've never seen a doctor work like that, except one doctor. I led his family to Christ in North Carolina a long time ago. You know. He worked three days nonstop, brother. He was a Hindu doctor. And his wife made a beautiful dinner for me. You know. And he came to see me, he borrowed half an hour to come. You know. And I prayed with him and sent him. You know. And the wife gave her life to Christ. You know. I had already eaten a dinner. The pastor took me out to eat on Sunday. You know. But his assistant took me to this place. You know. So the Indian hospitality, you have to eat before you leave. And that was biryani too. <laughs> nice biryani. Mm -hmm. So I ate it. I ate a double dinner, double lunch that day. <laughs> and I gave the word of God while talking. You don't talk when you are eating. So I stopped eating and then I would talk. Then I would eat and then wouldn't talk. So that's the way it went on. God became an answer to the problem. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Do you diagnose Christ has the answer to any problem you may have? God knows your needs. He cares for you. He is concerned about you. Your illness, your financial situation, anything that is insurmountable. But put God next to it, the problem is smaller. You take God out of it, the problem is a mountain. You put God next to it, the problem becomes small. So deal with that. And then meet the Lord, carry the problem to Christ. And he has the answer. Christ has the answer and Christ is the answer. Just like these four people, they saw that. You know. They didn't see in the case of Job. Elihu didn't see it. Elipas and all the other two guys, they didn't see that. They saw Job has a problem. They could not understand that. Job is not a problem. That's what I thought. Even Bill Dad did not see Job having a problem that God could answer. He didn't see that. Zophar didn't see that. Elihu didn't see that. They all thought Job is the problem. But God thought, God knew that Job is not the problem and these four people are the problem. You know. God gave that answer to Job. God gave that answer to the par paralytic, you know, the paralyzed man. Son, rise up and walk. Your sins are forgiven. Rise up and walk. So today you can rise up. If you raise yourself closer to Christ, raise your problem and put it at his feet, the solution is there. Our God can give an immediate solution or down the road. Give the problem to him. You don't have to deal with it. Leave it. Don't deal with it, but leave it at the feet of Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you for everyone, oh God, who responds to your word. Lord, sins need to be forgiven. If you are not forgiven, Christ is your Savior, the only one who died exclusively for your sins, for your sins to be forgiven. And then he carried all your sicknesses on his body, bore all your griefs in the form of all diseases, 
Isaiah 53:4 tells us and Christ fulfilled that by healing everybody saving everybody and dealing with every disease and destroying those diseases in people and that is the message of the gospel it has the power if you accept it lord forgive me i want my sins to be forgiven i receive you as my lord and savior then thank you thank you lord for forgiving me and give your illnesses diseases whatever the case financial problem mental problems any other problem place it at the feet of jesus christ has the solution he has the answer lord we thank you with you all things are possible let your name be exalted in every one of god who is open to you to receive you as lord and savior wherever they are touch them and whatever the case of illness o oh lord let it be healed delivered in the name of jesus lord we thank you for answered prayers oh god we thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen thank you lord there is always victory in jesus name so we are going to sing 473 victory in jesus 473 I heard all story have a savior came from glory how he gave his life on calvary I heard about his glory of his glory and I repented of my sins and won the victory yes lord hallelujah
Aleluya. Let us pray for the offering. Who wants to pray for the offering? Boring? You want to pray? Okay. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the camaraderie and love here this morning. Yes, Lord. And we appreciate everyone's donations so we can keep the church rolling and continue. Yes, Lord. Our quest to bring more souls here. Yes, Jesus. May we spend the, wise, the money wisely. Yes, Lord. Praise God we're all here this morning. Thank the love you. is so yes. strong. Thank you, Lord. May the peace of God and the power of God Jesus. and His presence go with you and me everywhere yes. so that we can be, we can take the church outside the church to Amen. people yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.